Okay, so the observer. So the observer is done by first recognizing that if, the, if you can see an object, like if you could see, if you had your eyes closed and you were aware of any, any kind of object, then there has to be that which is observing the object. Just as if I was to, if I was to hold a mug in front of you, the observer of the mug is not the mug. So if you're aware of anything within the field of limitation or contraction, anything, like if you're aware of the body, if you're aware of mental thoughts, if you're aware of a feeling, then it's an object. And the observer of the object cannot be that which is object. Now, it's possible for enmeshment or identification with an object, and therefore it can seem like one is if there is too much interest or identification with the body, then it can seem there's not, that one is the body, there's not an observer or a witnesser of the body. If there's a feeling, if there's a feeling of tiredness or, or a foggy feeling, um, it can, if you're mixed in with it, if you're identified or you're too interested in it, it can seem like you're one with the tiredness or the energy in the body. But then, how is that being experienced and what's the limits of that? And whatever that limitation is of tiredness or a feeling in the body, something is aware of that, something is witnessing that, which is not that. So there is something which is witnessing anything which is limited. So even if you're enmeshed with an object, with a feeling, with the body, with thoughts, just try and let go of being so interested in it and then being in that which is observing or witnessing thoughts, feelings, or the, or the limits of the body. As you go into the observer, there should be more detachment and more space. But if there's still, if this observer is limited or is enmeshed or identified with, what, with what's going on, so let's say you go to the observer of the body, but this observer seems to be have a relationship with the body or is identified with the body or the thoughts. There is another observer of the observer or a witnesser of the witnesser, which is not which is witnessing the identified witnesser. This witnesser is probably de completely detached from identifying the body or thoughts or feelings. And if not, then what's witnessing or observing that? Is there a witnesser in this room which is not connected or associated to any of the objects in the room? Is there a witnesser or an observer which has no limits? Even if one is observing but the end the observer seems big, what's observing a big observer? Is, does the observer of a big observer have a limit? When that which is the experience cannot, is limitless, has no contraction, then one is in the limitless realm. Also, if there's awareness of time, there is something that observes time. And there's an observer of time which has no interest in time. And in that observing or that witnessing, time doesn't exist. If there's a sense of location, the observer of location, the observer of location is not in location. And so location disappears. If one gets stuck, rehooked into thoughts or stories, thoughts can be like there is an interest in the field of thinking. Something is interested in hooking into the next thought. But if you let that go, being fascinated in the next thought being interesting, then there is something which observes the field of thoughts, which is not interested in any thoughts or even the next thought. And therefore you detach from being rehooked into thoughts. You know, and the next thought that comes along is not important. All thoughts are meaningless, meaning that there is no special thought that you need to go to the mind to get rehooked into. So as you keep seeing if there's any experience of limitation going to the witnesser of that field of limitation, go to the witnesser of that, it's not a mental process, no thinking is required. When there's witnessing of thoughts, uh, you know, thoughts are no longer